One, my mother is from Voronezh, Russia. She grew up in this city and moved to Germany in the early 90s, when one political and economic crisis was chasing the next, a year before completing her master's degree in forestry engineering. Both entitled aunt and my cousin Toshek have some sort of permanent skin disease that gives them a flaky, brown-red, and genuinely disgusting rash. But it is not dangerous if you keep the spots from growing. Now on to the moments of my entitled grandmother and entitled aunt. Grandma was born into a family of the World War II generation, and her mother, being a tough as steel mason from Kharkov, Ukraine, and her dad dying during the war. After the war, they lived in a village just outside of Voronezh. Grandma would move into an apartment in the city and give birth to my aunt and mother, with my aunt being her firstborn. My grandpa was very busy at work with being some sort of politician, so grandma was raising my aunt and mother as a housewife. I lack the words to describe the level of favoritism towards my aunt and whatnot due to the language barrier. She would do everything for my aunt while treating my mother like the dirt she just scratched off the floor. Spend over half the family's monthly income to go shopping in Moscow with my aunt, which by the way is a very long distance by train. Sure, mum didn't even get ten bucks from her to do something with friends, because the family could not afford it, even though she was clearly lying. Buy my aunt anything she wanted just because she wanted it? Sure, mum often didn't even get birthday presents. Grandma worked as a teacher teaching Russian, and would grade my aunt exceptionally well while grading my mom as hard as she legally could, and would use every opportunity to embarrass her while demanding she have extremely good grades. When my aunt got a worse grade than my mother, Gran would lock my mother up in the cupboard full of spiders to punish her. To this day, she has a panic attack if she even sees a spider, even a small one. On top of that, my mother would often get really sick. She's very sensitive to airborne diseases. When she was sick, Grandma would not take care of her and didn't even bother to go to a doctor with her. Instead, she would dump her at my great-grandmother's. Great-grandmother took her to a doctor and took care of her as well as she could. My mother's doctor repeatedly suggested they take holidays at the Black Sea, which is quite close, by the way, so the salty air at the sea could help her breathing. It's not like they couldn't afford it. And I bet the fact that my grandfather was a Communist Party official would make it a lot easier, too. But Grandma always declined. In fact, quite often verbally attacking the doctor in response. They were talking over the phone. And yet, somehow, Grandma had the audacity to claim that she was doing everything she could because she is praying for her well-being. My mother moved out at 15 before finishing high school and lived with my great-grandma. Then, when she was 18, she went to university, studying forestry engineering and surviving off some part-time job at a restaurant. One day in the late 80s, I forget when it was exactly, but at work, my grandfather went on a rant about how the government was corrupt and incompetent, spat at the party program and lost his job because of it. His workmates hated him because he was the only one there who actually cared about the well-being of the common citizen. Grandma was furious and tried to guilt trip him about it, threw a tantrum about how he was allegedly a traitor to the Russian people. And his response was to get a divorce because that was the first time he actually witnessed his wife the way she really is. My grandfather later died in a house fire before I could meet him, but there was nothing political involved as far as I know. Later, when my mother was already long living in Germany, my aunt came over to visit her and my dad while my mum was pregnant with me. The first thing she did when she arrived was to open the cupboard, take out all the clothes she liked. Not once did she ask if she was allowed to take them. She blatantly said, As Germany is a rich country, you must share with me. I live in Russia and cannot afford such nice clothes. You are egotistic for not sharing them with me. She is also constantly begging for money in spite of the fact that she works as an electrical engineer and makes more than both my parents and my brother combined, and yes. The salary is roughly 52 euros a month. Whereas my mother and dad made about 1500 each monthly, while my brother delivered newspapers for 50 euros monthly. Not to mention that we pay over 15 times her electricity, water, phone, internet, and gas bills and that on top of the very high tax rates in Germany. So why does she need the money? She lives alone, but spends most of her income on expensive brand fur clothes, even though her cupboard is already full. On top of that, because of her skin condition, she keeps demanding that we, and I'm not exaggerating or lying here, illegally smuggle drugs for her disease by mail because her disease is incurable and not really dangerous, 
her doctor just put her on long-term subscription of pain medication and mild skin gels to keep it from getting worse. By the way, my cousin is doing just fine with the same drugs as she is. We did it by begging our doctors to prescribe it to us, paying for it, and illegally sending it to her. She complained that she had to take it by injection and not as pills. You heard me correctly, we risked spending multiple years in prison for her convenience, so her arms don't have flaky red spots, and she is ungrateful because she has to take it by syringe. She is that kind of human. Also, when I started learning Russian and tried to speak to her on the phone, she straight up laughed at me for my mediocre pronunciation after two months of learning it. Now she is begging my mother to move to Russia because of how lonely she is. My cousin, Ivan, Alexandra, my other cousins, all hate her and left her. As for my entitled grandmother, she is now demanding that my mother takes care of her and terrorize my mother on the phone for quite a long time. She is now stopped. She was always telling my mother how ungrateful and unloving she is for not abandoning her children and husband. Seriously. Even better is her constant gaslighting of my cousins against each other, to the point where they literally call us and cry for help. Five months ago, Ivan called us crying because Grandma had turned Toshak against him, only for Toshak to call us doing the same. When they found out about this, all three of them abandoned her as well. Grandma did that after my mother visited them in May 2022, deliberately left her out after her tantrums. So when Alexandria started studying veterinary medicine, Grandma wished for her to fail. When I got to meet Grandma on the phone for the first time, about two months ago, on the 6th of January, Orthodox Christmas, it was quite the experience, let's just call it that. I greeted her and her first reaction was to laugh at me and call me a Nazi because of my German accent. Although both my mother and Alexandria said you can 100% understand me and that it is passable and pretty good for a four-month learner. The funny thing is, she really hates non-Slavic Russians such as Tartars, South Russian Turks, or Sakha, a cushion. But I'm the Nazi for speaking with a German accent, sure. Anyway, she also called me gay for not having a girlfriend, even though I'm not even gay, and unbeknownst to her, I have a crush on one of my fellow university students here. She also called me an embarrassment to the Russian people, and something else I did not understand. Before my mother took the phone, yelled at her not to speak to me like that, and hung up. I was straight up speechless. Two, some backstory before I share the text messages that really make this great. This officially started because my grandmother-in-law really, really wanted to see my newborn son. My grandmother-in-law over the years has started to show signs of what I believe is dementia and doesn't make the best judgments. I've also realized she can be emotionally manipulative and has been way before she started to show signs of not completely being there. I won't go into too much detail about this, just trust me when I say she's not overall a great person, but she's still my husband's grandmother, and I would have never done anything to upset her. Now, after about two months, my grandmother-in-law has really been pushing to see my son. Both me and my husband were hesitant about this, because she has been very sick recently. On top of that, she has a history of being sick and not telling anyone that she is until after the fact. Example, a family gathering. When I was hella pregnant, we were invited to Thanksgiving at their house, and I declined to go because I was getting induced the next week, and if I got sick, they would have pushed it back further. But grandmother-in-law promised she was fine, but I didn't feel comfortable with it and stayed home. Not even two days later, she told my mother-in-law she was very sick and wasn't feeling great even at Thanksgiving. All relevant to why I didn't want her to see my son yet, as we were still in deep RSV season, and he had just gotten his first round of vaccines. However, much, much, much pushing and guilt-tripping from her mother-in-law and sister-in-law, we decided she could meet her son at our house. Just a little detail, we live with my grandmother, and she helps me so much with my son. Honestly, most amazing woman ever. We decided if grandmother-in-law was going to come over, we were going to set boundaries to make sure our son was safe and have our own peace of mind. The boundaries were that we weren't comfortable with grandmother-in-law holding son, but would love for her to finally be able to see him. I specify this because some people see it as wrong that we would exclude her from holding our son, but we specified this to everyone before she came over, and she agreed to it. Remember, she has continuously been sick and won't tell anyone she is, 
And when it comes time to see my son, no way in hell she was going to cancel if she felt ill. On top of this, we said she needed to wear a mask and take a COVID test beforehand. The day that she came over, we received a text from my mother-in-law that she was also coming with my grandmother-in-law and asked what time they should arrive. Mother-in-law has been to our house a few times, so it wasn't a huge deal, but I realize now it wasn't the best idea. They walk in, and grandmother-in-law shows my grandmother the COVID test, not us, but whatever, and proceeds to stuff the mask she was holding back into her purse. At this point, I'm kind of over it, but I just smile and talk to her for a little bit before going back to the kitchen while my husband took the dog outside to use the bathroom. When I was out of hearing range, or so she thought, she asked my grandmother to hold my son. My grandmother turned to me in the kitchen and repeated the question, and I simply stated, Would you mind asking my husband when he gets back? I figured since it was his grandmother, it would be a lot gentler if he let her down. Instead, she started crying, no actual tears, and exclaimed, Why is no one like me? Remember what I said about emotionally manipulative? Yeah. I was uncomfortable. My grandmother was uncomfortable. Our poor other dog in the kitchen with me was uncomfortable. I excused myself to go start laundry after checking with my grandmother that she was okay, holding my son for another minute before my husband came back in. Immediately when I left the room, again my mistake, my mother-in-law walks over, takes my son from my grandmother, and puts him on my grandmother-in-law's lap. Before this, my son was smiling and laughing while grandmother held him, but faced him toward my grandmother-in-law. My son lost it and started screaming. My husband walks in at this point, sees his son on grandmother-in-law's lap, and immediately grabbed him from her and went into the kitchen. My mother-in-law was shocked and made a snide comment of, Who knows, no one gets to hold him today. But they both left soon after, and my grandmother apologized profusely for the situation when I found out. It definitely wasn't her fault at all. Now comes the real dramatic part. Three weeks after what I will now call the incident, my mother-in-law has called my husband, and we explained to her that we were upset with what happened. She didn't grasp what she did wrong, and the conversation ultimately went nowhere. Another week and more calls. Here's where the text messages come into the story. My husband to my mother-in-law. Hey, I want to let you know I'm not ignoring you, but I'm still not over what happened. We want you to be a part of ours and our son's life, but because of the boundaries you broke, we don't feel comfortable having you over for a while. The next week, my sister-in-law to my husband. Want to do dinner at mom's on Saturday if y'all aren't busy? I want to see your son. No, mom still hasn't tried to talk to us after her and Nana came here. The next day, sister-in-law to husband. Hey, what's the deal with mom and Nana? Something's been off since that day they came over here. Y'all have been distant. I just want to know what's going on. I already talked to mom, but me and LP decided that we aren't comfortable with mom coming over for a while because she broke boundaries. It's important to us because we did discuss beforehand what we expected, and our son's health is more important than anything. Oh, okay. What boundaries were broken? I'm confused. She wasn't sick or anything. She'd been around son before that day they went over there. What happened specifically that day that made y'all uncomfortable, other than Nana not wearing a mask? We already told mom about it, don't worry. Next day, side note, my postpartum depression has gotten really bad, and in-laws were starting to be a little much on Facebook, so I took them off. Sister-in-law to husband. Why did OP unfriend me and mom on Facebook? Stepdad just called and said mom is bawling her eyes out over this whole situation. I don't know what the deal is, but I hope you realize what y'all are doing to the family. I'm not trying to be in the middle of anything, but mom and Nana feel like they can't talk to you or OP. What's the deal? This shit can't go on forever. Y'all need to work it out. Like I said before, we already talked to mom about it. You said you weren't going to choose sides, and it seems you already have. Please stay out of it. OP unadded everyone because she has way too much going on and doesn't want to be in the drama. We never said mom wouldn't see son again, but we still need time. Son is our son, and mom and Nana broke a boundary that we set even before his son was born. Even if someone in OP's family did the same thing, it would be the same outcome. We were hesitant about Nana coming over at all because of exactly what just happened. The next day, and after a phone call with my sister-in-law, where sister-in-law said OP was causing all the drama. 
my husband said to my sister-in-law. After that conversation, me and OP have talked and decided we feel you need to completely stay out of everything going on. We understand you're trying to defend mom and be a messenger, but you've more than likely unknowingly taken her side in this when there is no side. We're his parents and we get to decide who does and doesn't see him. We aren't going to keep going in circles on what boundaries are because we've already stated multiple times what they are. What matters now is that mom and now you can't respect that we need time to just move on from the situation. No one is trying to start drama by dragging more people into this. Like that. You are in fact causing drama and we don't appreciate it. In case you forgot, we were very hesitant on Nana seeing Sun for the very reasons it happened. Not only did Nana ask to hold Sun when both OP and I left the room, Mom then took it into her own hands to hand Sun to Nana. We already stated we were concerned for him getting sick and weren't comfortable with her holding him, but that wasn't good enough for them. He's not a toy. We aren't mad at them, but the situation. But you have nothing to do with it. Doesn't matter, you're the messenger. You can still come and see him whenever you want, but we need time away from Mom to process the situation. Sister-in-law responded, <laughs> Okay. In case you're wondering, yes, sister-in-law did kind of come out of left field. I received comments that we shouldn't have just let this continue and ignored sister-in-law, but we genuinely wanted her to just understand why we were upset, and we would really like her to not get involved. Starting to feel like maybe I was just a bitch, and posted the text messages, names hidden of course, to a Facebook group called Monster-in-Laws. Not even a few hours later, and I received a text from my sister-in-law with screenshots of the post, and three question marks. I have no fucking clue how she found the post as she blocked me on Facebook, but she did. I felt very, very uncomfortable with her just happening upon my post, or if someone on the group of thousands of people recognized the story and sent it to her. Really not a huge fan of that, and I ignored her text, she sent screenshots to my husband. Here's what followed. You mind your own damn business, you've done nothing but stir the pot. OP has had nothing but problems since our son was born, and honestly, the last thing she needs is this. I don't know what kind of resentment you harbor toward her or why you even do, but you've hated her since we got married. Guess what? You're gonna have to deal with it. OP and son are my family now, and they come before anything. I won't let you or anybody act this way towards us. Decide if it's worth having a semblance of a relationship with us. I don't give a shit at this point, because honestly, I have zero interest in ever talking to you again. I haven't done anything. I've just been the messenger in this whole situation. If that's what you want, fine. Shows OP's true character. I forgave OP for what she did to you. She's always assumed I've had it out for her, but I haven't. You don't understand how much you've affected and hurt our family. OP caused all of this. I wasn't the one who was asking to see your son. I was sticking up for mom and Nana. They felt like they couldn't say anything to you because they didn't want to upset you. I chose to be the messenger in this whole situation because I actually care and love my family. You've done irreversible emotional damage to mom and Nana and now me. I hope you'll realize that and I wasn't the one starting drama. If you don't ever want to talk to me again, then fine. So be it. Don't come back around saying I told you so. I've done nothing but try to be nice and accepting toward OP and all I get is this. But if that's the life y'all choose to live, then go ahead. OP has never liked me or mom or any of our family for that matter, and it's sad it comes to picking sides. Don't call me a pot stirrer because I've done nothing wrong. I've only told the truth. Sometimes the truth hurts. Getting mad and unfriending me and blocking me also doesn't solve anything. Tell me where I've gone wrong in this situation, please. I was only looking out for mom and Nana because it hurts me to see them so upset. This is not guilt tripping you, this is just the honest truth. I haven't done anything wrong, yet I'm causing drama because I'm the only one not afraid to shoot you straight. I'm taking my wife's side. Like I said, it's sad you feel like you have to pick a side. We're adults and y'all are married. When you get married, you don't pick sides. Am I wrong? Please tell me what I did wrong. Honestly, this could have been over with the first text to my mother-in-law. Husband and I just needed a week or two to feel comfortable with having them over again, and instead my sister-in-law made it worse. Thank you so much for listening. Feel free to ask questions, or if you disagree with me, blast me in the comments. I'll take all criticism. 3. So this week for me was a very hard week and a very anger-inducing week. I'm a 30-year-old male and my wife is 24. We've been trying to have another child. We have one little girl already, four years old, and are now waiting to see if my wife is pregnant again. 
So far, all the signs are there. On Monday, there was a protest action in South Africa, with our electricity being in load shedding, where they turn off power in areas for a few hours to help lift the strain on the power grid, which is just bullshit. So with this protest action, I went home after work, and my mother-in-law said that the protest action is just a pain, and she does not understand it. Side note, I hate being interrupted or cut off in conversations. I find it very rude and disrespectful. Here is the convo between me and my mother-in-law. How is the road? Any problems? No, nothing, but I think they might just be getting ready for a bigger protest action and... Oh, that's good. I think the protest action might get worse. Please let me finish what I was saying. As I wanted to say, this protest action might just be the beginning. Last year's action was the same as this year and... No, I don't think so. They are doing it wrong. As I said, it might get worse. All the risks are there and all of the signs are there as well. I try to calculate and... No one can calculate the whole thing. I'm getting very pissed off now. Please stop interrupting me. I do risk analyzing for a living, you know. As I try to say, this might get worse. They might be targeting the lower income places first to get more people to join them and then take this protest action to the next level. Hence why I'm working from home the next week. Our CEO believes that... Oh, he thinks it will get worse as well. But that's your job to analyze these. I cut my mother-in-law off. This conversation is over. It's at that time I turned around and walked away, with my wife just glaring at her mother. The next day I was off from work and had a peaceful day until my sister-in-law came and visited. This was where the baby talk came in. I was busy playing on my phone and replying to emails when they asked me a question I did not hear. So my wife got my attention by lightly tapping my foot. This is her way of saying, hey, please pay quick attention here. I looked up from my phone and asked, Ah, uh, yes, what did I miss? So, what is your plan with wife during pregnancy? Well, going to try to pamper her as much as possible, helping more around the house, and... My mother-in-law then cut me off. Again. Why? Don't you pamper her enough? Let me finish talking. As I was saying, of course, knowing that she'll be doing a lot of things around the house as per normal, but I'm going to try and... Wait, you just said you were going to try and take over. That is really just not right. You're going too soft for a man. I'm now irritated and try to end the conversation, but my sister-in-law decides it's a good time for a temper tantrum. Well, I'll be going home then. Bye. My mother-in-law tells me that was rude. Rude? Says the person who keeps cutting me off the whole time, even after repeating myself to have it stopped. So the person to blame here is you, mother-in-law. For your own actions have caused this to happen. You keep trying to be a smartass about everything, being rude and disrespectful, and always trying to stick your nose in where it doesn't belong, and for that... Don't you dare blame me! How dare you do that! You just did it again! This conversation is done! I turned around and just walked off. Later that day, both my wife and my sister-in-law, after having it explained to her why I snapped, took my side, and just went off on my mother-in-law. Hell, even my father-in-law took my side. Brave man. Mother-in-law did eventually apologize, but too little too late, I think. 4. The building where I work has a road that runs along the side of it to get to the rear parking lot and the dock doors to the warehouse. We frequently have deliveries with large trucks and occasionally semis, and our company trucks are large box trucks. This is a private road. It is also a fire lane. The problem is... There is a private school next door. We've always had issues with parents parking in our front parking lot and along our road for pickup, so they don't have to wait in line like everyone else. We also have parents using the crossroad that connects their entrance drive with our road to use our exit as their exit. This has caused traffic backups and will prevent our trucks from being able to get in. A few years ago, we had bigger problems because they would have events or services the parents would park in our lot for extended periods of time. This means that we had no available spaces for our customers. But the school finally has been able to put a stop to that. We have done everything possible to stop these parents from using our road. We have put up signs, put up cones. We take pictures of license plates and send them to the school so the school can reprimand the parents. They will stop for a few weeks, then be right back to parking there instead of waiting in the line like everyone else. 
I've been outside letting my dogs out, and I've stared down people trying to stop and park there or use the crossroad. Even though there are cones that they just move to use it. Usually, they will just turn around and go the way they're supposed to. Now onto the two days of Entitled Parents acting like jerks. Yesterday, Entitled Parent 1. We discovered that they were at it again. I went outside and told the woman who just got out of her car that she could not park there, it was a private road. Oh, I'll just be a minute, I have an appointment. It doesn't matter, this is a private road and you cannot park here. She gets back in her car to leave. She then starts berating me about how I am being rude. I really wanted to respond with, the longer you stand there complaining, the later you will be for your appointment. She also tried to pull the, well, I've never been told I couldn't park here. Which is a blatant lie, because we've been having this issue with the school since we bought the building 17 years ago. Then today, Entitled Parent 2. I was outside to let the dogs out, and lo and behold, a car is parked there again. I took a photo of his plate to send to the school, and put a sign on his windshield stating that this was a private road, and he was not allowed to park there. I went back outside a few minutes later, and he was walking up. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He knows he did something wrong. This is a private road, and you cannot park here. It was a statement, not shouting. I'm sorry, but you don't need to get mad. I'm annoyed because you've been told repeatedly not to park here. Well, no one told me. I turn to leave, and he says to my back, You're being incredibly rude. I was so tempted to turn around and let him have it, but I just went back inside and texted the pictures to the school. <sighs> we do have a solution, at least a temporary one. The security from the school came over and blocked the drive with his cart and directed people away. This may only be on Fridays for the next few weeks when the school is having prayer service at the same time as pickup. But I was so happy I didn't have to shout at anyone today. I now have his number and he is angry on our behalf about people doing this. We're also getting signs and will contact the city about personally booting those cars that continue to break the rules. But for now, thank you Big Freddy. 5. A couple of years ago, a bunch of family members were at my grandma's house and, as always, me and my little sister were hanging out with our cousins. Two of them were around our age, 12 and 14, but one was like 8 years older than me. So we viewed him and his boyfriend as the leaders. At some point we decided to get out of the house and go down the road to this playground. It's important to say that my grandma lives in a private area, so this is the property of the community living there. I admit we were a little too old for the playground, but the swings were made of chains and really strong. When we got there, we noticed a woman was playing with a toddler on the soccer court. We didn't think much about it, and my sister and youngest cousin went to play in the swings, while the rest of us sat on a bench to talk. But a minute passed and the woman was getting away from the toddler and heading in our direction. She addressed me and my older cousin by our names before introducing herself as my grandma's next-door neighbor. After that, she pointed to my sister and cousin playing and said, and I'm paraphrasing, Don't you think he's a little too fat to be playing on the playground, I mean? Your sister's thin, but look at the size of him. She said that about a nine or ten year old kid. That pissed off my oldest cousin and his boyfriend, and they started arguing and calling her out. Now she was entering Karen mode. Look, I paid for this playground along with your grandmother, and I expect you to take care of it so my grandson can enjoy it, as you did when you were younger. Now, that playground has had its hard times when I was little, but it had just come out of renovations and still has its hard wood and metal structures today. But I think Karen thought about that as much as she thought about her grandson, who was struggling to climb the stairs out of the soccer court. If you don't stop this, I'm going to your grandma's house to have a talk. My cousin was fed up, and he told the rest of us to join my sister and cousin at the swings. And we ran for it, while he and his boyfriend stayed to hear the woman scream. A few minutes later, we see her heading towards my grandma's. We regroup and follow. But she was already at the door, with a lot of disrespect and payments. My grandma just nodded until she went away, then told us to go inside and that Karen was rude and not to mess with her again. In the house, I looked through a window and saw the toddler. He was climbing a grassy hill full of rocks, trying to get to his house because Karen was nowhere to be seen. We would throw water balloons at her house at every water balloon war we had after that. 
Hey everybody, Hal Freezer here, and thank you very much for listening to The Impractical Proudness of Parents. Hi, Pop. Episode 105. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Uh, please do hit the like button if you'd be so good. Thank you kindly. All right, let's move right along to Hal Freezer's question of the day. And today's question is... If you could only have either vegetables or fruits for the rest of your life, in terms of healthy food, uh, you can have other things. Would you choose vegetables or would you choose fruits? Personally, I think I'd probably choose vegetables because right now I really like smoothies. Um, but like green smoothies. So there's a lot of, well, you actually get apples and things in there, but there's a lot of like, like green veg and things you get as well, like kale and such. And you can sweeten them in other ways. So I'd probably go with the vegetables. Plus, I, 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 there's a lot. Of, I, I like most vegetables, to be honest with you. Uh, so yeah, surprised myself with the answer because I thought I would have said fruit. But let me know what you think in a comment below. And with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening and take very good care of yourselves.